I enjoyed it. All right, folks, we might um, kick off then and we'll have a few stragglers come in as we go. But again, thank you for making the trip out each month. And um, you know, again, the folks who got there last night, Jim's not here to sorry, last month, Jim's not here to say thank you, but um, I'll soon we'll pass on. Thanks. It was sound like it was a good event last time. Uh, a couple of other uh, little announcements, bits and pieces. If you jump on the meetup group and look in the discussion boards, there's a little discussion group going there about um, internet speeds. So if you follow the link there and do a, just a download test on the internet connection and throw up the results just to see what everyone else is getting. You now, if you're on a good internet plan or not, just gives you a comparison of what people are getting in the, in the local area. So, hey guys. <laughs> So you jump on the discussion board and use it for other topics as well. If something going on, you want to ask a question, uh, throw it up in the discussion board in between meetups and uh, get some interaction uh, happening that way. Uh, there's a couple of other upcoming workshops uh, that I'm running. I'm running a Twitter one tomorrow and it's basically about another six between now and October. So if you're interested in things outside the meetup group, uh, come and see me after this and we'll basically give out a, a group discount for those events. We've got a special guest tonight is Melita, my wife, so she's the very first one she's ever got to because uh, she's normally at home with our kids while I'm out here, so I couldn't do any of these meetup groups without um, Melita sort of there in the background, so I've embarrassed her, you have to tell you, you know, how, how much you value these, so. Uh, but as far as tonight goes, um, small, business, small, sorry, again, small businesses, uh, paperwork is, is always an issue. We love doing whatever it is we're doing, whether it's desktop publishing or doing social media or whatever it is we do, we love that part of it. And often the, the paperwork is left behind us, the thing we have to come back and try and pick up later on. Uh, so I know for us, and uh, I'm quite embarrassed from here again, but we've just got in about a month or so ago our tax return for 11, 12 years. So now we're going to try and do last year's one as well. So you know, we find it an issue. Uh, I've been using FreshBooks for invoicing, and that's helped a lot. You know, I've got all the other documents on Google Docs and things like that. Uh, but one thing I'm seeing coming up in forums all over the place and all kinds of discussions, wherever it comes back to entrepreneurs <coughs> and startups and things like that, is um, Xero as a software package. So I've seen bits and pieces of it. I've uh, done the trial, and, and you know, I don't have an accounting background, so it's for the past when I'm busy and never back into it. Um, and so I was keen to know bits and pieces about it, and I've been looking around earlier for someone who could do it. And then Peter made contact um, a couple months ago and I said, great, do you do zero? He said, yep, we're a certified zero group. Uh, so that's how we've got um, this room and our presenters for tonight. So uh, so thank you to Peter. Where is he? He's still outside there. So I see Peter Good Life uh, counting downstairs and they've got this boardroom. Uh, and just again, if you're talking to other groups or people who need venues, uh, you know, again, this is a venue I didn't know existed until we started looking around for here. So that's great. But uh, we've got Jason. Uh, Jason represents um, Zero in Queensland, so travelling around the state and basically educating and training on Zero. So thank you, Jason. We've got partner in crime. The back view is Ray. So they're our resident experts tonight. And, and look, I'm sure Jason is not supposed to be a hard sell on on Zero as a can package. It's more looking at you know what cloud solutions are out there for small businesses, and I guess using Zero as a good example of. You know, how you can sort of cut down the paperwork and fill that into your uh, workflow. Uh, before I hand over, there is a um, basically like a lucky door prize uh, put on by Peter with Life Accounting. So if um, I won't pass around now to disrupt people, but if you get your business card in here before the end of the night, uh, we'll do a draw and there's a bottle of wine uh, for the end of the evening thanks to Peter and Good Life Accounting. So thank those guys. Alright, so if I hold it up, and then I'll hand over to Jason. Thanks, thank you. thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Uh, coming tonight, great to be able to present here. Normally, um, we're presenting to business owners that probably aren't as tech savvy as what you lot are. So hopefully this uh, isn't too light for you. We, um, kind of what we go over is we, we demystify the cloud and you know, what is this thing called the cloud? Everyone's claiming they've got a cloud product at the moment. And then we look at how the cloud is going to work with businesses, uh, the things you've got to watch out for, things to be aware of, things to ask any cloud vendor, whether it be Xero or whoever. Um, and then we look at how uh, an accounting product works online. So of course, all businesses need an accounting product and, and how moving it online really begins to change things. Um, so just a bit of background behind Zero. We've only been around for uh, the last five or six years, uh, which isn't long. Um, yet within that time, we've got more clients using our online accounting package than any other any other company in the world, which is which is quite a feat. 
Um, within that time, we've become a $2 billion market cap company, which once again is just phenomenal for a startup company. To hit $2 billion after five or six years is pretty amazing. We've had some pretty big in hitting investors, guys that are plugged into this industry that know it inside out. Craig Winkler, for example, he started a company called MYOV 20 odd years ago. He um, sold his interest in MYOV about three years ago. He's probably one of the major investors behind Zero. He's on the board of Zero. This guy here, Peter Thiel, he started a company called PayPal that he sold for $2 billion. Um, he's also uh, an advisor to the board of Xero and, and once again is one of the major investors behind Xero. Mind you, these guys came along two years after Xero had gotten up and running. So um, they certainly didn't found the company, rather they've recognised the value of Xero as we begin to expand. So we've ended up with over 400,000 users worldwide. That's wrong, we're about 600 staff. Every Monday morning we have national team meetings and every Monday morning there's always one or two new people that have got to get up and introduce themselves. It's hard to keep up. When I started, I think there was <coughs> five of us. I think there's about 80 of us here, just here in Australia alone now. It's a completely different company when I start. Being online, we integrate with online banking, which sort of creates some really good efficiencies. You get your bank transactions pairing automatically within the software. So we've got bank things from over 2,000 different institutions worldwide. Being online as well, accessing your accounting software through your web browser means there is no software to install. So if there's no software to load, there's no upgrades to do. Upgrades happen, but they happen seamlessly behind the scenes on our end. Which means one of the challenges that accountants and business users have always faced is what version of the software you're using. You send your data file through to your accountant, he's got to figure out the version you're using, and open up the right version. Everyone's on the same version and no one needs to down tools to install the update. They're actually great delivery platforms for a software company such as us. It means we can roll out these small incremental updates on a regular basis. So we come out with an update pretty much every five to six weeks, I think it is. So just small little changes. You get a notification letting you know where the change has been to the software. So it means the software is quite living and dynamic. It's constantly evolving. It means we can be quite innovative as well in terms of what we're coming out with. The other big difference is unlimited users. Um, once again, old model. Single user, double the price for multi-users, or you've got to buy them in bundles. The whole idea with being online is being able to collaborate and work together. You, the business owner, being able to keep a track on where everyone's at, where, you, where your debtors are at. Your bookkeeper being able to log in and process those day-to-day -day transactions. Your accountant being able to keep an eye on what the bookkeeper's doing. And begin to analyse this live set of data that's sitting online. Begin to give you real-time business advice. Okay. So, the big question is, what, what exactly is the cloud? don't know if you've seen it, but there's, a, um, there's an advert on TV, a money lending company. And there's a guy sitting there and he pulls money out of the cloud. And they, they've got, you know, they're, they're cloud money lenders. I'm thinking, that's not the cloud, that's just an online application. Everyone claims to be in the cloud. As a result, it's created a lot of confusion out there as to what the cloud really is. You might hear it referred to as SaaS, or software as a service. We like to refer to it as online applications. But if you really want to dumb it down, and well, I'm not too sure, you guys probably probably a bit too simple for this group, but um, what I often tell the average business user is, when you see the term the cloud, just replace it with the phrase the internet. So cloud storage, it's internet storage. We're storing our data online. Cloud accounting, internet accounting. We're doing our accounting, but we're just doing it via Online. But I've got a video of a special group of people that they call digital natives explaining what the cloud is, or millennials, basically our kids or our children's children. A generation that's been born into you know this moment in time that we're living in. Te this technology is all that they know. I think all of us here we've kind of seen both sides of it as it's transitioned. But there's this new generation coming through. And I thought we'd I'd let them explain exactly what the cloud is.
psychological backup. Some people need something in their hands just to feel confident, so you can export your data out of zero if you really want to. <coughs> and of course, it's accessible from anywhere provided you've got an internet connection. From any device, and we really do mean any device, not just PCs, not just laptops, but Macs, iPads, tablets, phones, Android phones, which, um, which we'll look at. Overall, much total lower cost of ownership, which is why I think we're seeing the cloud absolutely take off. It really does change the way that you begin to work with your, your accountant and your bookkeeper from your perspective as a business owner, you've got everything that you're used to having with decent accounting software. The ability to keep track of, you know, to be able to do debtors, keep invoicing, keep track of who owes you what your debtors. The ability to, you know, run a, run a BAS, a preliminary BAS, keep an eye on GST, um, right through to payroll. You know, this data that's sitting online is being pre-populated by your banking data flowing through. So you don't need to re-key all your bank transactions anymore. It just appears on your manager with your data. But then, and this is why we're here today with Peter, we work with, with both accountants and bookkeepers quite closely. From Peter's perspective, he's got a live view on what you're doing. He can see your data live, he can keep it clean. If he's got access to live clean data, he can start providing management accounts, KPI type reports. And let's face it, that's why Peter and his team became accountants in the first place. It wasn't to tell you how much tax you got to pay was to help you work on your business, give you real-time advice. So all of a sudden, we're in a situation where your advisor um, can start really giving you some decent quality advice on what's happening here and now, not what happened a year ago, which is when it's all too late. Okay, so why don't I log in? Pretty topical, make your uh, internet speeds. I, I noticed just before we had um, quite a slow internet speed here, so let's see how we go. So to access Xero, um, what you do is you go to Xero.com and then click on this login button. Yeah, it looks like yeah, we might have internet speeds and issues. This is probably a good example of what to do when your internet connection drops out. You get asked that question quite a bit actually. What happens if we lose our internet connection? <coughs> All phones these days have what we call a, a personal hotspot. So I think what I might do is just quickly turn on my hotspot. I didn't really want to use this because I'm not too sure how long my battery's going to last. But um, So let me just switch over from Peter's network to my phone. We lost our internet connection at the office about a month ago, actually. Apparently one of the, one of the main stations got taken out in the CBD, which was just about half a Milton, which is where we're based. So the floor that we're on, we, we immediately switched over to our phones. We just ran out to go have coffees and an early lunch, but it meant we could keep on working. So all right, let's see how we get. So I'm now connected through my phone. Yeah. It's probably worthwhile pointing out to you, know, I'm just on the 3G network here. As you know, mobile data phones aren't that fast. But hopefully you'll see, even with a really slow internet connection, zero is still pretty fast. Okay, so your email address and the correct password. <laughs> <laughs> I did that every single time too. <laughs> and we're into zero. Now I'm just going to go in full screen or presentation mode here. This isn't smoke and mirrors, we're still sitting within our web browser. So this is zero. So probably the first thing to point out is we've been able to redesign the software from the ground up. I think with a lot of the traditional software companies, they're kind of hindered by traditional ways of doing things. Traditional look and feel. We've been given a clean slate. So what we thought is, um, without having them doing anything, we really want to give you a view on probably what's most important for small business owners. Now, now what is key to you guys? What is key in the small business world? So, invoices, so outstanding invoices? Yep, which relates to profit and loss. Cash flow, isn't it? Cash flow for small businesses. Oh, we're jumping out of cash, who's going to pay us next? Uh, and who do we have to pay? So we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could get a quick view on how we're tracking cash flow-wise without even having to do anything? So I've just logged into Zero here. We can see our bank balance. Now that's our live bank balance. 
live as our, however live our internet banking is, we can see how much money we expect to go out. You notice we've, they've really simplified the terminology. Money going out is in fact our supplier invoices, those, those invoices we owe, and also any payroll expense that we might have coming up. So we've got about four grand in the bank, we've got about two grand overdue, we're doing all right. Cash flow wise, we're going okay. If we weren't, we'd probably jump up into money coming in, which are our, our debtors, our invoices that are owed to us. And in this instance, gee, we've got quite a bit that's actually outstanding, seven grand. So even though cash flow we're tracking all right, probably as the owner, I probably want to have a quick look at that $7,000 and just see who owes me what. So once again, I'll click on that money coming in. And here's our debtors or our sales or our money coming in screen. Little graph just loading there while it loads. We can see who our top debtors are and in fact, who owe us what. So here's Ripley University, who actually owe us the majority of that seven grand. They owe us about six thousand dollars that's outstanding so once again probably just before I really get into my day as the business owner or as the, the accounts person or as the, or as the VA the virtual assistant I'll click on that line creates a copy of their statement and then we click simply click on email and that will go straight through to to that business now once again if you just take a step back and think about the way we traditionally had to do that we would have had to run aging reports we would have had to do mail merchants it can often take half a morning just to get your reminders out. The zero really is that quick and simple. You can also do a statement run and just send statements out to everyone really quickly. Now just back to that dashboard. Once again, I pointed out that bank balance. So that's our live bank balance. Yet you'll notice we've got this other balance in zero. The two don't match because of these 28 bank transactions that have flowed through seamlessly into zero. We need to tell Zero what to do with those transactions. Once we've coded these transactions, in theory, those two balances should match. So, once again, what's one of the first things you would do in the morning after you make yourself a cup of coffee? Jump on the computer and log into Gmail. Gmail. <laughs> yeah. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm usually still in bed when I log into Facebook. I'll say it's that. A lot of business owners will jump into their internet banking. Who's paid me? Who's paid me every night? Where's that money coming from? It's normally 8 o'clock at night. Like, uh... Really? So instead of logging into internet, internet banking, we find a lot of Xero users log into Xero and then click on this reconcile button. Because if I do that, what that then shows us are all of our internet banking transactions that have come through either overnight or since we last logged in. I'll just close out of this help file. So here are all about internet banking transactions that have flowed through. Same level of detail that we would get with our internet banking. So in fact, Ridgeway University, we've received $6,000. They, they did pay us. Probably good to reconcile your bank account before you send out your reminders, right? right? So the payment did come on overnight. But the really cool thing with Xero is you've got Xero checking in the existing transactions. Now Xero can see that we've invoiced them We've invoiced Bridgeway University for the same amount. It's even matching up this reference or this invoice number. So it knows that this incoming payment matches this invoice. So once again, if you just think about traditionally the way we would have had to do this, we would have had to log into internet banking. We would have had to write down who's paid us. We would have had to open up our desktop software, make a cup of coffee while it's opening up. <laughs> then physically key in that payment. Then physically find the corresponding invoice and marry that up. We've logged into Xero. We click on Reconcile. And if I click on OK, we've just duplicated that whole process. So it really does speed up a lot of time. Any bookkeepers in here? So yeah, you've got to be careful if you're a bookkeeper, especially if you charge on a, a time basis. <laughs> because Xero can, can make a dent in your revenue, unfortunately. So will I, will I fire out a, a pay statement then to the, to the person, or...? Um, no. No, you would still have to send them through a all item statement to let them know that their account is up to date. But having said that, there is an invoicing site that your clients can log into, which we'll look at. Okay. They can keep a track on not only their, their invoice history, but where they're up to and any outstanding invoices. So here's another one. This time we have paid one of our, our suppliers, Truxton Property Management. You can see that there's an invoice in the system, so I'll click on OK. Now, Xero is not always going to know what to do. So, for example, here is under the spent column $15.75 that we spent at a bakery. 
So let's manually code this. We'll give it a name. We'll just call it Copper Street Bakery. An account code for the bookkeepers and the accountants in the, in the room. You can just use your the general ledger code. For everyone else, we probably just want to type in the description, which will probably go through to entertainment. We should be able to pass that off as entertainment. And we'll say morning tea. Recorder with Mick. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. Close up, yeah. For morning tea, and he made us pay. <laughs> <laughs> so I click on OK there. Now that we've coded that, just by way of example, I want to show you how Xero learns as you go. So if I just click on refresh, let's pretend we've logged out, we've logged back in the following morning. Now, a bit further down the line, here's another Copper Street Bakery. This time it's for $11.90. That first one was $15.75. Yet it's close enough to that original transaction to prompt us to use the same coding that we just learned. So it learns as you go as well. It really starts to speed things up. And if you want to teach it what to do, you can also do that through creating these rules. So let's say we have to spend four and a half grand with our advertising agency every quarter, rather than have to code that. Click on create rule. Let's say we pay you equals smart agency, and description equals our custom number. Let's say we really wanted to narrow that down, and the amount has to equal, or be greater than or less than four and a half grand. Send that through to advertising. Give the rule a name, or keep that rule name. Decide on what bank account or bank accounts it applies to. Click on save. Now I've just set up this rule. Now, if we go back into reconcile, it should um, prompt you. So here's the transaction log. Sure enough, it's wanting to apply the rule smart agency that we know is going to go through your advertising. So I'll just click on OK. So really, really quick and simple. I'm not going to go into too much detail tonight. I appreciate it. It's still as cool as it is. It's still just accounting software. Um, you know, one last thing I might just show you actually is cash coding. So if I just click on the cash coding tab, these are the same transactions we were looking at before. It's just that they're presented in a, in a spreadsheet or a tabular format. The great thing about this is you can click on these column headers and sort. So if I click on payee, sort similar transactions. So there's a whole pile of parking transactions there. So let's code them all at once. So if I click on the first one, and then do the old shift and click to highlight them all. Send that through to motor vehicle expenses. Save and reconcile. We just coded, what, five or six transactions. So let's get really quick and simple. Can you make up your own codes? Yeah, yeah, if you want to, absolutely. If you're used to using a, a certain chart of account structure, absolutely. Does this link to PayPal in the account as well? It does. It sure does. Yep, it certainly does. Um, invoicing, I'll just quickly show you invoicing. So, invoicing is done through money coming in, which is really our, our debtors. Um, so, if I create a new invoice, once again, who it's going to, if you start typing the name of the client, this predictive text should bring up the name of the client, or we can create a client on the fly if they don't already exist. Tab over the date will default, default to today's date. Due date, you can either put in the date or let's say we're Seven days from date of invoice, so I'll just type in plus seven and we'll calculate the correct date. Branding, this is the invoice layout. If you want to, you can customize the invoice layout. So you can actually download the existing Xero invoice layout, open it up with Word, play around with the format, maybe add your own BPay details in there, upload it back into Xero, and then you could select that customized layout or have it defaulting to that particular client. So can you add your own logos and Yeah, stuff absolutely. Too? Logos are easy. So the logos is just a setting and then you upload the image file. And that applies the logo to the default layout. Or you download that layout into Word and then really start customizing it, playing around with it in Word. You know, we're all pretty familiar with Word. So uh, you can really? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully just uploading the, the logo would, would be fine. I'll show you what the layout looks like. It's pretty clean and crisp. So if you customise it, you can just have your own layout. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Yeah, absolutely. So items, you can go with a standard paragraph of text. You can go with a product code, although I will say Xero is very light when it comes to inventory. Wouldn't really consider it full-blown inventory. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's a bit Can of a... Can I just have a, a question around this? Yeah. So if you do hold stock, but yeah. you don't, it, your stock's not large enough to have a stock management system. Yeah. Um, 
if you're invoicing somebody, can you code up certain products? Like how many products could you have so that when you're doing an invoice, you don't have to type in vitamin C. You know, every time you do an invoice, you could just type up O O one or yeah. you know how how many as of many as you like. That's what yeah, that's right. So you would have all your product codes down the side there. So if we were right. to O O one, you know what the product was. You just type it in. Okay. So if you start typing vitamin, would it all pop up with vitamin C? Yeah. It would do actually. Yeah. It goes on the description or the code. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So it would just yeah. pick it up. Correct. But you would have to put all of those codes in there. You would. Manually. Yeah. 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 So you'd just yeah. Yeah. But it wouldn't act like a stock control system, though, would it? Because no, no, it doesn't every track, time you sell one, mm, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't track things such as size, weight, colour, yeah. uh, number of items per pallet, mm -hmm. other materials where you would put in a stock code and it will make up that stock mm -hmm. item based on the module. It doesn't do that. It doesn't, it doesn't. But let's come back to that. What we've done with Xero is we've opened up our database to other developers, which has created this massive ecosystem around Xero of these peripheral services that, that does do that, but we'll, we'll touch on that. At the same time, we're building the stock as we speak. We're hoping it'll be in by the end of this year, this calendar year. So, but yeah, something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Or you can just have a um, line of text, you know, service item line, say training, we get a bit of training. Once we've generated our invoice, now if we had employees perhaps doing invoices off their phone or off their iPad, we can set them up with an employee level of access. If we wanted to check any invoices going out for the company, we could uh, specify that that employee needs to have those invoices approved, which would come through to the, the boss or the manager who would approve it. Um, or you could set it to approve their own invoices. In this instance, we're the business owner, so we can do everything. So I'll click on approve there. And it's created a copy of that particular invoice. Now, once again, you can print it to PDF and print it out on your printer and snail mail it, but you can email it. If you click on email, it automatically will attach a copy, to, a copy of that PDF. Once again, we kind of think that's a little bit old-fashioned as well. The way we like to see it work is don't include the PDF, because up here it creates a hyperlink or a URL. I'll show you what it looks like, actually. So when the client gets a copy of their invoice, then we just have this link. This is a bad example. It's also got the PDF on this one, but without the PDF, it would force them to click on that link to view their invoice, which would open up a copy of their invoice within their web browser. Now, being in a web browser, Xero being online, passes a bit of code back to Xero, letting you know that that invoice has been read, which is pretty cool. So kind of the, the age-old excuse of, I didn't get the invoice. You did get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> But also, we've created this Pay Now button. So once again, this is where PayPal will come into. If they've got a PayPal account, they can pay through PayPal or credit cards, or we've got a couple of payment gateways, uh, eWay. Um, so hopefully that's really going to streamline and speed up some of your debt recovery as well. In fact, if they use Xero themselves, they can click on Save, and it automatically saves a copy of that invoice into their own system, so they don't even need to re-key it. Um, if they want to, they can set themselves up with an account, not a zero account, but just an account with the business, which will allow them to click on the account button and they can see a full history of all their account details, which once again, never been seen before with small business software at least. It's kind of something that you'd expect with high-end stuff, such as Telstra or Optus, you know, when we log in and we see a full account history, now small businesses can come up. So you same. can put your merchant details in there as well? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's the invoicing side. Look, I won't go into too much detail. That's and this isn't really supposed to be a hard sell. So, so, if, it, so if you're actually um, invoicing people, like if you're actually collecting payment when you see people, mm. so you might be... Just cash payments? Cash or by your, you know, high caps or whatever it is. Yep. Um, and part of that is, um, so they're actually going to pay you up front. Yeah. But you probably saw an issue then with an invoice for their records yeah. and for our records. So you'd have to still do that, wouldn't you, to keep yeah, track of what yeah. you're doing. So you would still collect payment and then you would just make so it's paid. Is Correct. That right? You've still got the old traditional spend money and receive money. Ah, which okay. is how you do that. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Are you alright?
on any account. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, that's a common question actually. Yeah. You know, I hear people say, so everything's got to go through the bank account? Yeah. yeah. What about my under the table stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, supplier invoices, obviously through money coming out. I won't go through how to create a supplier invoice. It's very much the same look and feel as creating a business invoice. But the cool thing is, if we've got an electronic copy of that supplier invoice, so the supplier emailed through a PDF, we could attach that PDF to the supplier invoice item line itself, which means we don't need to file away that paperwork anymore. ATO accepted as a source document. You just simply drill into your client, drill down into their individual transactions, and you could bring up a copy of that original supplier invoice, which is which is quite cool. Um, so it doesn't matter what version. Sorry, I'm a bit of a question. No, it doesn't right. matter what version you actually have, like whether they mm. email you a. Um, a PDF version or um, it's, it's attached in an email, you don't have to save as a file. Like at the moment, I put them all on Dropbox. Well, yeah. If you wouldn't have to do that, you could just put it straight into the system. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if it was an email, you'd probably have to save that attachment. Right, as a Word or something like that. Well, yeah, a, yeah, JPEG or PDF. Well, how would we right. format it then? Save yeah. it to your desktop. Yeah. And then when you click on Attach File. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was getting nervous clicking on attach file. I don't even know what folder it's going to go through. <laughs> Downloads. Oh, this could be dangerous. So you can identify that. Black shot custom. That's a motorbike, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's where you'd find the file and upload yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. There's something about the mobile phone app. You can actually take photos and attach them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah, so take a photo of the invoice. You know the crazy thing is, guys, we, 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 we're seeing this massive shift in technology at the moment. I mean, it's very subtle, but it's happening. PC sales are declining. For the first time ever, we're seeing a, a reduction in PC sales. End of last year, they declined by 5%. From January through to March, they accelerated to 11.1%. That represents billions of dollars. So we're not buying computers anymore. What we're buying are these things. Devices. Apple sold more iPads than any individual PC manufacturer sold PCs in the last year. Here in Australia, we own more smartphones per capita than any other country in the world, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Problem is, though, um, you know, with these devices, there's not a lot of space on them. So this is where I think you find cloud software is coming into it. There's no software to load. That's not storing any data. We're just browsing it. Problem is. Trying to do this on a tiny little screen can <laughs> be quite challenging. So what we've done is we've had to create a separate app called Zero Touch. Now this works for both iPhone and Android device. So I'll quickly play this video for you. Zero Touch. It's the new way to manage your business on the go. Imagine on your way to work, you quickly check the balances of all your bank accounts and credit cards. At a glance, you instantly see where your business cash flow stands. With a client meeting scheduled, you look up their address and view it on the map. To expense your travel, you take a photo of the receipt, and it's instantly uploaded to zero. Say goodbye to stuffing your wallet full of receipts. Once the job is done, simply create and email your invoice on the spot. At the end of the day, with your cash flow under control, you can relax. Thanks to Zero Touch. So that looks pretty cool. You've got to take the photo, you've got to say taxi, and bring up your travel general ledger code. So it's not quite as simple as that, but it's still pretty simple. Mm. I think the bigger picture is that who would have thought a couple of years ago, you know, a full blown account credit on your phone? It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely amazing. We're, we're Can attending. you go through some of your reports, like back reports? Yeah, sure. Sure thing. So back into Xero, um, you've got this reports menu. If we go into all reports, you pretty much got all the stock standard reports you'd expect with any good accounting software. There's the there's the VAS there. So if we run an activity statement. Demo data. In fact, if you want to work through those figures, you know what actually makes up those figures, do a bit of an audit. You just simply click on this tab here, and it shows you all the individual items making up all those individual. Yeah, pretty well, it's pretty easy. 
32 seconds to do a back statement. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was dangerous. And the longest part is filling out the answer to the tax department. How long did it take you to fill out the form? <laughs> that was 15 oh. seconds of it. <laughs> That's just like Stick that fingers on a nail board. P&L, you've got a lot of ability to really start kind of slicing and dicing in data. We keep track of the most commonly run formats, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time you come in. But if you did want to, you know, let's say you want to specify what a period actually is, a period might be a quarter, it might be a year. Let's say we, if we had data in there, let's say we want to see the past five years and compare that to budget. It's an open data system, so you can have whatever date range you want, spanning multiple periods or half periods. Um, probably the other thing worth pointing out too is under general settings, we've got we've tried to do away with a subcoded chart of accounts. So you have your chart of account number, and then it has an 01 or an 02 or an 03, depending on what the profit center or department is all about. So rather than complicate things, we came up with these tracking categories. So you can set up your own tracking categories. Being demo data, there's one already set up called region. We could add another one if we wanted to. I mean, it could be anything from, I don't know, employee, we might want to track sales, or, or uh, job, or department. Let's say we wanted to track jobs. You can have as many jobs as you like under this category. I'll just create two for simplicity's sake. Now that we've created that tracking category, whenever we're in zero, doing anything, whether it be paying the payroll, or, or reconciling our bank account, or creating an invoice, we'll now have an extra field that we can complete called job. And there it is there. And obviously, we've only got two jobs. So let's say uh, then, just coding everything to the various jobs, we then wanted to run a P&L. We can jump into the, the profit and loss and then begin to filter by tracking categories. So let's say... So you did it for investment property then? Yeah. yeah. If you're tracking investment properties, you can allocate for... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then jump in, run a P&L, and just say for investment property, you know, A or B or C or one, whatever the investment property name was. It's a really quick way of just being able to filter without making it too complicated either. So your report would then, end of financial year, would it still give you the job categories in your end of financial year tax stuff or...? Only if you told it to. Okay, cool. Because so you can tell it to. Yeah. So once again, guys, I won't bore you with, with the reports too much, but basically all the stuff standard reports. Um, what I will show you is um, payroll. So everything that you'd expect with a payroll system, all of your, you know, your tax calculators, uh, super fund calculations, leave accruals, um, just stock standard. Now, what we have been able to do that's quite interesting is create what we call these employee portals. So that's where any employees that you've got can log in and have a look at their pay history. They can print out their own pay slips when they go for that loan on a Friday afternoon. They can see what they've been paid. I think we all lose our payments. I don't know why I do. They can run, jump in and print out their own payment summaries. In fact, we've also built in this, this leave management. If you turn it on, they can see how much leave they've got away. You can think of a thing. And then apply for leave. It comes through you for approval of pass. It really helps alleviate some of that HR admin burden that as business owners we, we tend to get bogged down. Quick video on payroll. Zero Payroll is a world-class, fully integrated solution that lets you run your entire payroll straight from zero. The Payroll tab is available from the main navigation. The overview gives you a high-level snapshot of any pay runs that are due to go out, as well as a history. You'll have a snapshot of pending leave and upcoming leave. As this is a big expense for any business, we've applied the same logic as the main dashboard to make it easy to see the impact on cash flow. Opening balances allow you to switch to zero at any time of the year and have all your year-to-date payroll information brought across. It's easy to set up and edit staff payroll information, including bank accounts for payment and super fund details. We've even built in some smarts, like hiding key information such as salary until you mouse over it, and the ability to split employee payments across multiple accounts by a fixed amount or percentage. If you're using tracking categories in zero, you can split the wages and salary expense at the payroll stage, so it's automatically distributed when you run reports. To process the payroll, simply head into Payruns, drill into any staff that need their hours entered or pay updated. 
deselect any staff that aren't on the pay run, then post it. Automatic superannuation payments are a huge time saver for employers. Money will be automatically distributed to each of your clients' super funds. No stress, no hassle, it's all taken care of. Zero payroll is included free in all business addition plans in Australia. Okay, yeah. Certainly what my partners, uh, my accounting partners tell me is as long as you've got everything set up, it saves a heck of a lot of time just running the pay run. Um, relating to this lack of functionality within Xero, if Xero doesn't do something you need it to do, chances are we've got an adult partner that does. What we've been able to do at Xero is, is open up our database. Traditionally, um, accounting software companies have locked down their database. If you've been another developer and you've got a product that you want talking, to your traditional desktop software, you've often had to pay you know, $5,000 and above just to get the kit, the tools needed to get the two programs talking. And then if the software company goes and changes their database, you've then got to scramble to rebuild that connection. So what we've done at Xero is we've created an open API or application programming interface. Think of it as a little plug that sits off Xero that allows other software developers to just plug straight into Xero, really quick and simple. Um, what that means is we've come up with, I mean this is just a, a portion of them, over 200 different add-on partners that sit around the Xero ecosystem. It's really quite amazing. It's like a, a Xero app store. So with, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. So in terms of um, um, stock, once again, if you go to Xero.com, do more and then get add-ons. <laughs> we keep track of most popular ones, it's a bit hard to know what all these guys do, so we have these categories down the side. So inventory for example, the most popular one is Unleashed, it seems to suit most small businesses really well. Certainly quite, quite a detailed product, it starts at about $30 per month, so once again it's still relatively cheap. It goes up to these guys here, Sin7, their pricing starts at $25,000 just for the software. Going fees. So once again, depends on the level of functionality. You know, so since they're obviously for big corporates, you know, they've multiple warehouses and all kind of ERP. What they call e-commerce. This is really interesting. Um, I've met a, met a guy, uh, well, a bit like Shane actually, just a young accountant. Don't get any ideas here, Shane. But <laughs> what he did, he was passionate about basketball. He started up a, an online basketball shop where you could log on to his website and buy basketball merchandise. He, um, he, so you log on to his website, you buy the, the singlet or the t-shirt, the website sends a purchase order off to the supplier. So he's not actually sitting on any stock, it's going straight from the supplier to the consumer. Um, of course, because it's one of our e-commerce partners, the website's talking seamlessly to Xero. It passes that invoice across into Xero, so they're not having to rekey any invoice. Because they're paying online, that payment comes through. So this kid logs on once a morning and sits there clicking on that OK button to marry up these incoming payments with these existing invoices that have been automatically generated. A self-contained business. It's really quite amazing. I'm sitting there thinking, what can I sell online? Like so does that mean the suppliers have to have zero? No, no, it's just no. sending, just automating, the website's automating a purchase order. So they get right. an email, they see what the the kids' business is purchased, they've got the right. delivery address and they send it off. And to be honest, I said to him, you know, is it really that smooth? And he said, every now and then the goods don't turn up and I've got to re-engage the supplier and find out what's happened. So it's not completely self-contained, but right. mostly is. Yes. So then he just drives traffic to his website and yeah, that's it. That's it. That's <laughs> quite amazing. Wow. And this is kind of what we're seeing. This is the value of this, this add-on community around zero. It's really beginning to level the playing field for small businesses. You, to come up with a, 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 some sort of uh, system, um, such as an online website talking to your accounting software, you would have been looking at about 10, 15 grand a couple of years ago. This kid's doing it for less than $90 per month. So it's quite cool. But once again, guys, more to be, more something to be aware of. We certainly won't, won't drill down into too much detail here, but if you do need stock, um, at least it's worth looking at, or <laughs> bide your time and hopefully we'll come up with a decent stock system by the end of the year. We actually started building it last year, but the other thing we've been getting demand for is um, 
their interest orders and sales orders, which of course are tied into stock movements mm. as well. So it's, uh, it's taken us a bit longer than we would have liked. Justin, do you know any show folks on um, Zapier or Zapier.com? No, no, what's that? Worthwhile Googling over here. Um, it works as an API, so basically you put in one box zero, you put in the other box on the screen where the other tool is, and it will do the, the programming between them basically yeah. on the website. Wow. Um, so that whole list of so CRM software, when you create a customer in the CRM software, mm. you run it through Zapier and we'll just run a rule every five minutes and check for any new customers and we'll create a new customer inside of um, Zero. Wow, that's pretty cool. I know we also integrate with um, FreshBooks. Well, 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 Zapier joins all those services ah, right. up, so it's just the, 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 the connector the in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that will work for suppliers that aren't on this list, I think. Um, yeah. But I mean, through the API, a lot of these existing software providers can get a seamless connection working without having to go through a third party okay. as well. But certainly if you're looking for software that don't integrate, it seems like Zapier is probably a really good it's Mate, option. And so the web interface, so you basically grab whatever tool it is from the icon, drop it in the left hand side of the website, wow. grab the icon of whatever the other CMS or whatever the other software is, drop it on the other side, and it does the programming on the spot. Wow. Um, there is a video on the small business web um, that kind of explains these, these add-ons quite well. But that's about it guys, that's our, that's our presentation for tonight. Any questions before we wrap up? Yes. Uh, lots more entities, we have multiple entities that are standalones, separate bank accounts and so forth. Yeah. Is there, is there a one fee? Per separate, separate ABNs are they? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, no way around that. Seems to be the way the market's heading as well. I mean, even in YB, just to get five data files off mm -hmm. one package, you buy in YB off the shelf, you only get one now. Okay. So, unfortunately, hopefully the time savings make up for the, the extra cost. And look, there are different products. I mean, there's the core $49 product um, that, we, that we advertise, and then there's a multi-currency $64 product. Um, but we do have a $10 cash flow product as well, which is really ideal for, for property investments. Um, or even a $29 zero light product, which limits the amount of bank transactions and the resources you can have to through. Not a lot of people are going with the, um, the cash flow product. The problem is you can only get the cash flow, we don't sell it direct. You can only get it through our partners such as Peter. Um, so it's $19 if you need to report on GST or $10 if you don't. Yeah. So make sure you right match the right product to the right end as well. Yeah. Can you link up, say you've got a couple of different zero accounts, can yeah. you them and make them talk to each sure other? Sure can. Cool. Absolutely. Yep. Um, probably one of the biggest ones I get is security. You know, the data's out there in the cloud, how secure is it? And it's an important question to ask any cloud vendor because they're not really cool, unfortunately. <laughs> Anyone can start up a cloud-based company and could have their server just sitting up the back room. Um, so with Xero, our servers uh, adhere to SAS 70 Type 2 level of certification. Um, they get audited, I think it's every quarter, to make sure that the, both electronic penetration tests, people trying to hack in, and also uh, physical penetration tests, people trying to break into the building, which is pretty cool. Um, so uh, S the, 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 the SAS type two, 70 type 2 is in fact banking level security. So in Xero's instance, given we've got these bank feeds coming through, we need to have banking level security. So more chance of someone trying to hack your bank account than there is trying to hack your profit and loss. We balance sheet to find out how much money you've got in your bank account. Um, Where's the data stored? That's a good question, really good question. And you when, can't tell you for security reasons. Uh, <laughs> No, look, so the, the data storage or the data hosting, very much a specialist industry. Software companies, you know, uh, Sage tried to host their own data. Sage is huge in the UK. Um, they came out with a cloud product within two weeks. They, their, their data got compromised. They got hacked, basically. So it's really slowed down the growth of cloud software in the UK. Um, two years later, they came out with a cloud-based product. They're going through the same data hosting company that we go through, a company called Rackspace. There's three main ones. Google, uh, sorry, yep, uh, Google, Amazon, and Rackspace. Rackspace seems to be the most popular commercial one, whereas Google and Amazon are both commercial and consumer. So it's Rackspace that have the security, 
Now, Rackspace, being an American company, have servers both in America and one there. They've just built one in Australia as well. So your data is going to be stored in both America and Australia. Now, the thing to be aware of with Rackspace, being an American company, is in America they have this thing called the Patriot Act over there. Mm. That's not a question. Yeah. There was a, <laughs> the thing Thanks for called, illegal amounts of money, Alan. No, it's just who's, control, who's controlling the database and if the Americans decide to take access to That's it. So they, they're able to seize the data if they deem it to be a risk to yeah. national security. Um, so if, you, if you're a terrorist, <laughs> you've got fictitious businesses, probably keep, it off, keep them off zero. <laughs> for that data, even if you've got it, say, on the Australian news server or another server, say, yeah. in the Philippines, you know, you know, they, could, yeah. they can lock it down from America. If it was in the Philippines, it wouldn't be Well, we're completely in hypothetical, but yeah. wherever you've got three servers around the world. Correct. You know what, even if we just used the Rackspace Australian server, being an American company, they can, we're yeah. still dependent on American legislation. Now, the really interesting thing is we have the same legislation here. Mm. We just don't have much as, as much fanfare around it. We don't give it a special name like the Patriot Act. So the Australian government could seize your data as well. Yeah, which that's actually notice the difference. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> and you know, the really mind-blowing thing is the Australian government and the US government have an agreement where they trade this information. Yeah. So whether it's based in America or here, there's no different, to be honest. What is important, though, is we comply to Australian privacy legislation. And at the moment, Australian privacy legislation recognises American stored data as being compliant to Australia, as long as you're not a government agency. For a government agency, it has to stay onshore. If you're a business, it could be stored in the UK, the US or New Zealand, and it would still be Australian compliant. Anywhere else, it's not. In fact, one of the things that we've, we've worked with with the New Zealand government, um, the first country in the world to do it, is they brought in a code of ethics for cloud uh, providers where basically um, you know there's a minimum level of security uh, you've got to comply with local legislation there, there's got to be failover um, systems in place in other words if the server goes offline there's got to be backups and if you comply to that there's a special badge that cloud-based providers can now use in New Zealand letting everyone know you know like a builder's what is it you know the builder's association oh, well, badge so. yeah same sort of thing working with well, we were working with the Australian government. Uh, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, once the, the, the election happens. But <laughs> we're trying to get the same thing. Like yeah. <laughs> we're trying to do the same thing here. To our best interest, it eliminates the cowboys out there. There's a lot of cloud-based companies springing up, and you know, they they don't adhere, and uh, it, it could damage the the industry. What's that? Oh, sorry. Quick one. Was that SES or SSA? For the 70 um, type 2 SAS, yeah. thank you. SAS, yeah. So, what happens if zero goes bust as a company? What happens mm. to the number then? How do we get to it? Yeah. <laughs> Look, you got, I think if zero was to go bust, you'd see the writing on the wall. I mean, if you do your research on zero. Um, you no, know, I was just mean, you know, in 10 years' time. If yeah. Whatever happens. You know what, I think the bigger like, danger is. Zero becomes a, a big multinational corporate. So I want to buy it out. Yeah, that, that's when I think that's probably the thing we need to watch out for. Mm -hmm. At the moment, data ownership is the key. Who owns this data? Is it is it zero? Is it Rackspace where it's physically hosted? Um, is it the business owner or is it the accountant that often sets up their clients on zero? And the only way to nail that down is during the setup. Whoever sets the data up, clicks on the terms and conditions, becomes a legal owner of that data. It doesn't matter whose credit card you use, but you're the legal owner of the data. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question on that. So um, I understand that you can actually trial zero um, for free and you can set it up yourself. So do yeah. you actually need an accountant? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and does it do like the tax at the end of the year? Like, could you manage it yourself? Or is it... Yeah. Um, you guys might be a bit different. I think the average business owner, it's worthwhile going through an account. The accountant can set up the correct chart of accounts. Um, you know, the accountant can, can do the heavy lifting, lifting for you. We train the accountants on how to convert data. So if you're bringing your NYB or your QuickBooks data across, they can do the conversion for you. Um, you know, the, Peter and Shane are certified, so they can even give you a bit of hand-holding uh, in those early days. But to answer your question, um, Look, you could run a BAS yourself, but obviously not being a BAS agent, you can't submit it. 
you still need to come back through your accountant. So you can either set it up yourself and then give your accountant access or get your accountant to do the heavy lifting, it's up to you. Works either way. 50% of our revenue comes through accountants, which is interesting. So mm -hmm. you know, it's these guys that are the trusted business guys. Do you get a different rate, is that right? Like you do it no, yourself well, it, de it depends on the pricing model, right? But yeah. if Peter just passes on the full rate, well, one thing we do give Peter is a two month promo code so Peter could actually get your fees frozen for two months. Hope you don't mind me sharing that, Peter. <laughs> so if you come back through Peter, you'll get two months free, which you don't get with that trial. The trial is limited to the number of transactions. Right. So that gives you plenty of time to get zero set up. Get your bank feeds coming through, um, do a few invoices, and just evaluate how it's going to work. If it's not mm. going to work, let Peter know. Peter can delete it himself. He's not reliant on us mm. to remove that. Um, if there's any problems, you know, you can either come through Peter or you can come through directly through to us. Um, and if you start off with a basic one, then you can upgrade. To, dep depending yeah. on your needs. Yeah. If you're realising that, oh, I signed up for the cash book and I need payroll. Yep, that's right. Jump yeah. on to the... Yeah. Go from the night to the what, Excuse me, what yeah. again was the one that you said it was about $30 to go through account for? What was that? Um, it was the, oh, the stock. Oh, um, oh, the oh yeah. Okay. There was a light edition. And I was yeah. just interested in the light edition. Let me so. quickly show you. Um, some industry secrets here. This is the, the tool that we give our accounting partners to use. So this is where Peter would go in mm. and set you up. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the pricing from here. So these are the plans that we advertise directly online. These are what you can sign up for. Medium is the most common one. Unlimited transactions. If you need to pay more than 20 employees or if you need magic currency, it's large. Um, then there's zero small for $29. This is limited to 20 bank transactions per month and five outgoing invoices and five incoming invoices. So it's really designed for freelancers, property investors, low number of transactions. Mm -hmm. To be honest, a lot of property investors end up signing up to this $19 cash book and just randomly generating their invoices. With the $19 cash book, once again, it's unlimited everything. You just don't have debtors or creditors or payroll. Mm -hmm. You don't need to report on GST. It's the cash book. Once again, we only give our partners a special primary code. Um, so, once again, I, I don't know. As, um, as customer feedback, yeah, I reckon you need to bump that light version up a few features to yeah. get people in yeah, because you right. have a lot of small businesses using that one who then would upgrade yeah, that one. Right. I know, yeah. I know. But it's just not quite enough. That's really yeah. common feedback, yeah. mate. I, yeah. I think that light's for our marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> so we can say, from $29 per month, when the reality is, no one goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you really do Yeah. Does anyone use Peter here? like Peter's services. Um, I can highly recommend him. Um, mm -hmm. I've been with him for a while now. I had a very, very messy 2011 and 12 financial year. Mm -hmm. My bookkeeper didn't do the right thing by me with zero and I had a lot of problems. So I had half on my op and half on zero mm -hmm. and Pete sorted it out. So I can highly recommend him. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say that. It's good to hear somebody yeah. who's actually... Yeah. So yeah, I bowed down to him. He saved, <laughs> he saved my ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's any more questions? We're gonna get Jason Marcus. Reporting, reporting um, the uh, accounts, town of accounts. Yep. Is it reasonably easy to do, or obviously just the charters? Yeah, yeah. And what about the? Data like for if I was to import the stuff from 2011-12 data. That's where it starts to get a bit complicated. Yeah. Once again, all that information's in the help file. If you yeah, don't take savvy, um, you'd probably be alright. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, mate. But that's it, guys. Alright, well, yeah, thanks, thanks again. Chest appreciation for, for Jake. Uh, and yeah, so even just a tool, if you write down, just to have a look at, not only zero, but all the different connections, is as uh, API. So it's based on API, so Z, API, ER, um, and you can, so 
Zen, a, I don't know if you want to type in the portal. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Um, yeah. You just Google it. Z A P I. Oh, sorry. So just yeah, Z A P I. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you very much. 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 Th